Hello viewers, and welcome to the seventh level, which is the second scenario for Kaza Doom, this game's very first deluxe expansion. This is another episode in the LOTR LCG progression series, which is brought to you by Cardboard of the Rings, the bi-weekly podcast about the Lord of the Rings, the card game, which is a living card game by Fantasy Flight Games. My name is Mitch, and with me, as always, is Matthew. Hello. So, Matthew, where did we leave off in our story since last time? After our hero's excursion into the pit, and based on information from a dying goblin, the heroes have made their way to the seventh level of Moria, still searching for any signs of Balin's colony. The seventh level holds the Chamber of Records, and it is there that the goblin said they would find Balin. An ancient tome also seems to hold clues to the whereabouts of the colony. All right, so whereas Into the Pit was all about treacheries and location cards, using that cave torch to help us in exploring the very, you know, entrance into Moria, this scenario is going to be an all-out brawl against hordes and hordes of goblin enemies. So to start things off, why don't we go ahead and take a look at our decks. And in this video, I'm going to be using two leadership heroes and one spirit hero. So this is going to be very much like what you saw from me for Into the Pit. So I've got a lot of different dwarfs in this deck, uh, as does Matthew, to try and get the most use out of Dane Ironfoot's Win Ready ability. I'm trying to focus on a lot of willpower to hopefully burst through these two quest phases, and I'm using a lot of different action advantage cards so that we can not only quest, but we can also also focus pretty heavily on combat, so I can bounce Gandalf in and out of play, I can use a lot of corrective abilities to add willpower or add attack power, I can do all the standard resource acceleration and cancellation effects, and hopefully this will end up working out pretty well. Uh, what are you going to be using, Matthew? Uh, my deck is virtually identical to the last time. Uh, Gimli and Thalon for tactics, Biffer for leadership, so Goal here is, much like the last video, to pump out as many allies as I can to hopefully handle the Goblin Swarm. Alright, well I think that about does it, so why don't we go ahead and make sure our player decks are shuffled, and then let's go ahead and draw our opening hand of six cards. So, let's see, I think my opening hand is actually really, really strong, but how about yours? I am going to take a mulligan. All right. So just talking a little bit about what I've got, I've got a global action advantage event. I've got a dwarf that I could pop in and out of play to <laughs> deal some damage to goblins. Uh, I've got resource acceleration. I've got the one change that I made from my last deck, which is a horse ally to get rid of some plundered armories. And uh, how was your mulligan? Uh, not too bad. All right, so why don't I go ahead and make myself the first player yet again, and let's go ahead and take a look at our quest cards here. So quest phase 1A, our setup is going to be search the encounter deck for Book of Mazerbol, and have the first player, myself, attach it to a hero of his choice, then shuffle the encounter deck. So the Book of Mazerbol is a restricted objective, I've gone ahead and attached it to Dane Ironfoot here, and it reads, attached hero cannot attack and does not exhaust to commit to a quest. So he can commit to the quest, he can stay ready, and then if I need, he can also do some defending. He just can't attack, because he's holding a book. Uh, and we've already shuffled the encounter deck. Quest phase 1B here is going to be the standard win revealed, reveal one encounter card per player, and add it to the staging area. So let's go ahead and see what we get. What we don't want to see is Cave Troll. Let's see how it works out. Encounter card number one is a Watchful Eyes. So the first player uh, attaches this to one of his heroes. It's a condition attachment. If the hero is exhausted at the end of combat, reveal a card from the encounter deck and add it to the staging area. I don't suppose you've got a miner in your hand. Nope, All not right. the mulligan. Well, why don't I go ahead and slap that on Dane, just like in the last video. Card number two is... A Plundered Armory. So this is a fantastic early card, because not only do I have my ally to get rid of it, but as soon as it leaves play, each player gets to attach a weapon or armor attachment from his hand to one character he controls. So I don't have that in my deck, but... If you happen to have, say, a Citadel Plate, saving four resources would be fantastic. Are you that lucky? Nope. 
Damn. All right, well, in any case, three threat in the staging area. I have an armor, but it costs one. And I was going <laughs> to borrow a weapon, sorry. And it costs one, and I was going to play it the first turn. So, unless I draw a better card. So. All right, well, so, yeah. hopefully you'll end up drawing something better. But uh, let's go ahead and do our resources. Draw our first card. Uh, I'm now able to cancel shadow effects, should that uh, come into... Should that end up being handy. And I've got a resource acceleration attachment. I could certainly go ahead and put that on my spirit character. Although... Well, one thing I will tell you is, unlike our last video where I had no lore cards, I am sitting on one, two, three, four, five. Okay. A neutral card, which there's only one of, and then one tactics card. So I also happen to have some handy lore attachments mm -hmm. that will deal with cave trolls and whatnot. I have two. Um, so I'm not saying put Stuart sure. on uh, Biffer, but right. by God, am I going to need resources. All so. right. Well, I think what I'm going to end up doing is, just to help both of us, uh, for our minor sphere, I'm going to go ahead and do Stuart on Dwalin, trigger it to throw him two resources, and I'm going to probably take advantage of Biffer's action each and every cool. turn. So I've also got Theodrid to really boost your resources, so hopefully this will just allow us access to a ton of different cards. So hopefully this will be a great start for us. Um, I suppose I'll spend two, and I'll put into play a Zigil Miner, and that's all I'm going to be doing. So how about you? I am going to play a Doral Delph Axe. Okay. And the question is who to put it on. I mean, I can certainly put it on Gimli, but I could also put it on Dwalin to help him so his ability will trigger... Uh, it's the only tactics card I happen to have in my hand, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't particularly care who it goes on. So would you like Dwalin to have it? Um, I suppose Gimli's probably going to end up with just massive attack power no matter what. Almost all of the enemies that we're going up against really only require three or at most four damage to kill. It could certainly go on Dwalin, but at the same time, I don't really expect I'm going to be taking too many enemies. And I certainly don't have any action advantage like I normally do at this point. So should you put it on Gimli, maybe? Just as an yeah. early game That's, play? Yeah, doesn't matter to me. It might end up being wasted on Gimli. I'm just afraid it's going to be even more wasted on Dwalin. So. Okay, and that's all I can do. All right. So I suppose that brings us to questing. So we've got to go ahead and make 15 progress. As soon as we get to quest phase two, the Book of Mazerbal is gone, and we suddenly are revealing additional enemies each turn. So I'm not sure how quick we want to move through the quest, um, but I guess I'm not too concerned about taking things really slowly. So why don't I go ahead and commit Dane to the quest, who doesn't exhaust. I'll do Theodred and Dwalin and the Zigil Miner as well. I think for Theodred, I'm going to go ahead and put his resource on himself. And what do you want to send? I'm sending a total of three, four, five, six, seven. I'll send five. All right. So it's going to be a total of 12. And let's see what we get here. So staging card number one is... A Goblin Tunnels. So this must be one of the only locations in the deck here. While it's in the staging area, it gains forced. After a Goblin is revealed from the encounter deck, remove a progress token from the current quest card. And this might end up being pretty annoying. Card number two is... Uh, each player must raise his threat by one for each enemy in the staging area. Then the last player discards an attachment he controls. So you should have taken the Dwarf Delph back. I guess so. Damn. Dwarrow Delph Axe is gone. At least we don't increase our threat, so that's going to be in the discard pile. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So we're going to be up against five threats, and it looks like we're going to make seven progress. Seven. You know, I suppose that would be a whole lot worse if it was a forest snare. Yeah, definitely. So, for travel, do we want to travel to either of these? Um, I suppose we don't want goblins getting tougher. 
Um, right. I could care less about its response, quite frankly, and so we're getting three threat out of the staging area. Okay, so maybe we'll get lucky with the draw. Why don't I go ahead and make that Plundered Armory our active location here. So Goblin Tunnels sitting out here in the staging area. Maybe it'll pull some progress tokens off, maybe not. Uh, I guess we could have made that the active location, but... Well, I guess, do we want to swap them? I've got an ally in my hand where, at will, we can get rid of the uh, plundered armory. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. Um, I mean, it's just se seven progress tokens we have to get through. I guess, let's let's get rid of the goblin tunnels. Okay. Sure. So, and that'll naturally let us slow the quest down a little bit, and maybe we'll be better prepared for that second quest phase. So, okay. all right, so with that said... I guess travel's done, there's no combat. I'm going to strip one resource from Dwalin and toss that over to Biffer. And I suppose that's it, so shall we refresh? Mm -hmm. All right, refresh. Your first player, and I'll go ahead and draw a card. Do my resources. I got a fantastic Istari ally that I could ambush into play if we need him. Okay. So what are you doing for planning? Uh, I will play uh, better an axe hand. Okay. Gosh. I will play a Glaoline. Perfect. A little bit of uh, card advantage for us. Great. And why don't I see what I'm going to do? I suppose I'll pay two from Dwalin to do the Rittermark's Finest. And now the only thing is I can't commit it to the quest and use its ability, but I could certainly get rid of that location we've got here. And that's all I'm going to do. So, questing, what do you want to send? I will send five. Okay. And I suppose, who are you thinking of using Glaowine for? Me. Okay, <laughs> sure. going to be selfish. Yeah, yeah. no worries. Just, uh, I don't have a cancel when revealed, so if you were going to use it on me, it'd be best to do it now, but... No worries about you using it for yourself. So I will commit, I suppose, all the same folks as last time. And I think I'll also send the Ritter Mark's Finest. So I'm going to do a total of three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to have a total of... Th or actually, sorry, instead of the Ritter Mark's Finest, why don't I just go ahead and uh, use its ability to put two progress tokens on the Plundered Armory here. So... Goodbye, Rittermark's Finest, but you serve your purpose, and Plundered Armory is gone. Do you have a weapon or armor attachment to put into play? Nope. All right. The one time we actually have it in play and get rid of it, it doesn't do anything. But 12 committed to the quest. Let's see. Card number one is a Goblin Archer, and because Thalon is committed to the quest, it's immediately going to take one damage, and it's going to be killed. This would have been annoying just because, since it's only eligible to be hit in the staging area by ranged attackers, there wouldn't be too much we could do with it. So, fortunately, it's killed immediately. Card number two is... A Goblin Scout. So this is going to be three threats, but it's also going to take one damage from Thalon. So the Goblin Scout means we're up against a total of three threat. We've sent 12, so we're going to end up making nine progress. Seven of that is going to be absorbed by the Goblin Tunnels, and then that's going to make two quest progress on Search for the Chamber here. So six more progress, and we'll pass... Uh, by our very first quest phase. So, travel, nothing happens. Encounter, neither of us can get uh, this goblin scout. Do you want to have Glaowine draw you that card before refresh? Yep. All Ugh, right. Another damn lore card. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, why don't I go ahead and toss one more resource over to Biffer? Thanks. And uh, I suppose, shall we refresh? Mm hmm. All right. So, refresh. The uh, new version of OCTG in here automatically boosts our threat. And another lore card. Unreal. Well, I just got a cancel when revealed, so that's certainly ah. going to be handy. All right. Um, let's see. I've got that dwarf ally that could deal one damage to orcs, but I suppose no reason to play him yet. So, what do you want to do? Uh, well, you're first player, right. for, so... for my planning, I'm not doing anything. Oh, well, I'll play an Airborne Record Keeper. 
Awesome. And that is it. All right, to Willpower Ally. All right, well, anything else from you? No. All right, well, I suppose we should quest. Once mm -hmm. again, I'll send Dane. I'll actually end up sending my entire team, so a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven from me. And how about from you? I will also send seven. All right. Something important to keep in mind at this point is if we happen to get a ton of two hit point goblins during, say, my resource phase, I could uh, sneak attack a dwarf ally into play, and then on my planning, I could play him for real. So okay. I could just devastate this, you know, uh, the table mm -hmm. here. So you sent a total of seven, which makes a total of 14. Let's see what we reveal. So card number one is a cave troll. So one damage from Thalon. The scary thing about this guy is he's engagement uh, 33, and for each excess point of combat damage dealt uh, beyond the remaining hit points of the character damaged by his attack, uh, we have to damage another character uh, that player controls. So nasty enemy here. Next card is... A Goblin Swordsman, so one point of damage from Thalon, and this is going to be an enemy that's going to come down and engage us. So plus two attack if its attack is undefended. We're going to be up against a total of eight threat, which means we're going to make six progress, which is enough to pass our current quest phase. So we're going to move on to quest phase two, and Book of Miserable is going to be removed from the game. So let's put this in our quest deck down here, out of the game. And at the end of staging, we now reveal the top X cards of the encounter deck, adding all enemies to the staging area. Discard any other revealed cards without resolving them, and X is the number of players. So 17 progress tokens, and we already win the game, but we have to make it that far. So there's no traveling to be done. The Goblin Scout stays in the staging area. Goblin Swordsman is by default going to come and attack me and then Cave Troll is going to be sitting here in the staging area for a while. What do you want to do for optional engagement? Uh, well, you know, if you take the um, the Swordsman, then you'd have to defend with Dane, which triggers the uh, right. Watchful Eye, so I don't mind taking the, uh, the Swordsman. Okay, and shall we just leave the Cave Troll sitting there in the staging area? Yeah. All right, sounds reasonable. It's still three rounds or so before we have to deal with it. So, Swordsman is engaged with you. Let's go ahead and do one shadow card for this guy. And how do you want to deal with it? Gimli will defend. All right, so Gimli is defending the attack of three. Shadow card is... If the defending character is an ally, discard it from play, which would have triggered an undefended attack for five. So, fortunately, yeah. Gimli survives with one damage on him. Mm-hmm. And the Veteran Axe Hand is enough to kill it. Alright, so Veteran Axe Hand's attack of three kills Goblin Swordsman. And now and that then, combat's done... Yep, I was just going to say, Leia Wine is going... I'm normally not stingy with card draw, but since I have a hand of lore and neutral, I'm looking for some tactics. Ugh, and now I get a attachment. <laughs> or, I mean, a weapon, or armor. Oh, I see. <laughs> so... Bummer. Well, bummer, bummer, bummer. Little but I can pay for it next turn, right. so it's okay. Would you want another lore resource? There's uh, nothing not... too much yeah. I can do with it. Yeah, that would All be right, nice. so I'll strip another resource off Dwalin and uh, hand that over to you. Cool, thanks. All right, so refresh, and you are first player. God, another damn lore card. Oh, Good draw a card, do my resources. At this point, I've got two events which will allow us to ready all characters. Okay. So it probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to say... Okay, so you're first, so why don't you go ahead and do your planning? Well, the first thing I will do is play a Citadel plate. Perfect. So now Gimli can hopefully deal with that cave troll if we have to, you know, have him come down. Yeah, and I will play um, one more Airborne Record Keeper. Awesome. So a ton of willpower here on the table. All right, so for my planning, and I'm thinking of doing something that might end up being a little bit risky, but I'm kind of making the assumption that there's a chance we might be able to win the scenario this round. So I've got an event in hand which is going to allow us to commit all of our characters to the quest, and then we can ready them. 
All right, so you're probably going to notice a very small edit in this video where I'm going to go ahead and redo the order in which I do my planning phase. So to start things off, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull four resources off of Dwalin, and I'm going to take one resource off Dane Ironfoot here, and I'm going to go ahead and play Gandalf. I am Gandalf, and Gandalf means me. Now for his ability, do you think I should damage this cave troll, or should I drop threats? I'm pretty comfortable with the cards I've got. Um, you know, if we have to deal with the cave troll, like if we don't make it through this turn, one, we have a couple more turns till he comes down, but I've got two traps that will be perfectly good on him. Okay, great. So why don't I go ahead and just drop my threat by five? So I'm going to drop down to 26, and at this point I'm done with my planning. So why don't you go ahead and do questing? And right off the bat, I'm going to pay one leadership resource for a sneak attack, and I'm going to go ahead and pick the Longbeard Orc Slayer. So he's going to come into play, deal one damage to this Goblin Scout, and that's going to be three threat out of the staging area. Um, I've also got an event that's going to allow us to ready all of our characters, so there's a chance that we might be able to just push through this final quest phase right away. So is it ready all dwarf it's characters? It's ready all characters. So might as well commit uh, everyone. Okay. What is Alright, Glaywine does have willpower, so I'm sending uh, everybody. Alright, so I will also send everybody, and then I'll strip four resources off Theodrid. He'll give himself well, he'll give he'll give Dwalin a resource. And I'll strip uh, one resource off Dane for a total of five, and I'll play Grim Resolve, which is ready all character cards in play. So ready all those cards. And we'll be sure not to use Control R, because we'd increase our threat. Yeah. So I'm going to commit a total of two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, twelve. And how about you? Well, if you would check the new handy-dandy feature of Octagon, I've already set my willpower thing. All right, so... <laughs> so I'm sending 14. All right, so we've got a total of 26 willpower committed to the quest. Let's go ahead and see what we get for staging. So card number one is a Goblin Spearman. So I'll put one damage on it for Thalon, and this is going to be a two-threat enemy. Card number two is... A Watchful Eyes. So when revealed, first player attaches this to one of his heroes. Uh, we're not quite home free yet, because we've got this forced effect. At the end of staging, we've got to reveal two additional cards. And if they're enemies, they have to interplay. So let's see here. This Watchful Eyes is going to end up attached to you. Uh, I suppose we really don't want this. Should I go ahead and cancel when revealed? Yep. All right, so I'll <laughs> spend one resource from Dwalin. I'll use a test of will, and I'll discard that. Watchful Eyes is canceled. Now, we've got to go ahead and discard, or sorry, reveal the top two cards here. So card number one is another enemy, so Goblin Spearman sitting here. Um, so, since Thalon is still committed to the quest, Goblin Spearman is going to be taking a point of damage. And our final card is going to be a Goblin Swordsman. So it's also going to take a point of damage. We've got a total of 26 committed to the quest. We're up against a total of 9. So it looks like we're up against 9 threats. We've sent 26 to the quest. We're going to end up making exactly 17 progress, which is just what we need to pass this phase of the quest. Uh, we certainly would have had a lot of allies, you know, ready to deal with all of these guys if we needed to. Uh, the Longbeard Orc Slayer certainly would have bounced back into my hand at the end of the quest phase so we could uh, deal with these guys pretty handily, but I guess that's the quest. So, Matthew, any closing thoughts here about the seventh level? Well, if I thought the first one was boring, this one was even more so. Uh, I We beat it, what, like two or three turns? Uh, maybe a few more than that, but it felt like two turns. Um, 
You know, I mean, I'm sure we just got lucky with the cards coming off the encounter deck uh, not being too bad because this was just over in a heart uh, a heartbeat. I, I think it speaks to the power of the dwarves and certainly Dane Ironfoot's ability. It was nice to have him as an extra quest when he had the book. Um, you know, I was in, in a sense looking forward to dealing with the cave troll just because he's one of the new enemies and he's pretty massive. But at the end of the day, we just squeaked by there at the end and you know, made it look pretty easy, I think. Yeah, I mean, things were looking a little bit grim at this point, but really, thanks to Grim Resolve, we had so many ready characters. I mean, I had Gandalf available as a defender, and you had countless allies. As soon as it would have been my planning phase again, uh, Longbeard Orc Slayer would have dropped into play. All three of those goblins would have been killed, even if we couldn't scrape uh, together enough actions to deal with them. You had Forest Snare in your deck. It's kind of funny, the go-to combo I'm used to is Thalin and Gondor. Dorian Spearman and in Into the Pit and the seventh level. Uh, neither of those have we had the chance to see that combo in action, but I suppose that really about says it. This scenario can be over really quick, or it can just be a complete nightmare. We never saw the orc horn blower that does his double surge. We only had one of these two cave trolls, and we were fortunate enough to keep our threat very low, so hey, anything else to say? Nope, I guess we'll just be wrangling with the Nameless Fear in the final class. I guess so. Well, then, as always, thank you guys so much for checking out yet another very quick entry in the LOTR LCG progression series. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel if you have not done so already. If you've had some very different play experiences uh, with the 7th level, be sure to let us know in the comments below. But with that said, next up is going to be Flight from Moria, the third and final scenario in the Kaza Doom Deluxe expansion. So thank you guys for checking this out, and we'll see you again soon.